How's it going guys? It is episode 13 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. I assume we're going to have the black pieces this game. Yeah, because I think we've had white the past few games and we have drop rating. Uh, my past couple games have not been great. The playlist will be linked below if you want to see the previous games. But they have not gone as I had anticipated. I thought it would be a bit easier to get to 2000 Delo in all honesty because that's what my like over the board classical rating is so my online rapid should be higher than that in you know reality but i've got to prove it and we're going to play the karu khan many of you who are loyal subscribers of the channel know that i love the karu khan and here we are going to take and after knight takes i don't well f3 is actually a move gambiting this pawn but i think it's a bad line I don't see the point of it. So yeah, knight takes. And knight f6 is a move here. Trading like this. But again, I've played this in a few games. I prefer what's known as the Karpov variation. With knight d7 followed by knight f6. And bishop c4 is a bit odd. More common is bishop d3 to get on this long diagonal for when I castle kingside. But bishop c4 tells me that I should expect after knight g to f6, which is what we're going to play, that he's going to go knight g5, targeting the f7 pawn, as expected. And e6 should be the move here. And the thing is, we have to watch out for a lot of sacrifices after e6, because our bishop isn't defending the pawn. We could play a move like knight d5 to block off the diagonal, but I don't like moves like queen f3, or maybe queen h5. It just looks a bit scary. So I think e6 is fine. If knight takes, king takes, we're all good. If e6, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, we're all good. And if e6, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, attacking the queen, we can just go queen e7 and pin the knight. And we should not necessarily win it, but trade it off. So e6 is fine. I'm expecting probably queen e2 to put further pressure on the pawn. And I think we can probably play a move like knight b6, attacking the bishop and opening up our bishop to defend the pawn. It also opens up our queen's attack of d4. Whether we take it or not, I don't know. But knight b6 looks very logical to me. Just checking I'm not missing anything. Knight b6, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen e7, we trade the queens. So that's all good. Yeah, he can't take that because he has to trade off both of his minor pieces. And then he's only left with a queen. Just because we have two defenders compared to his three attackers. This is apparently the Smyslov variation. And I believe Smyslov... I think it was Vasily Smyslov. And he was a very good Soviet Grandmaster. I want to say. I think he played quite solid chess most of the time, which is probably why he has a line in the Cairo Khan, because it is unbelievably solid. And I think I think the move bishop e3 actually shows just how solid this is, because his attack is gone. He, he has no sacrifices that work, because our queen is attacking d4, and we were threatening to take. I'm surprised he doesn't play knight f3, but maybe he wants to retreat this knight back to f3 if we try and kick it out. We could kick it out, but I don't see a problem with taking the bishop. That is white's best piece. I would, I would argue it's white's best piece. So we can take. I think takes, queen takes, knight d5 looks very nice. Putting pressure on this bishop, opening up our queen's attack on the bishop. That looks really good to me. So yeah, this is under attack. This is under attack. If the knight retreats, we could take. But I don't think we have to, because where's this bishop going? It's got nowhere to go. So, we could go to g5. 
we could stop that with bishop e7. But I maybe prefer the bishop on d6. One problem is this bishop. Because we played e6 early, because of the way white was trying to attack me, our bishop, where it would normally come out to a square like f5 or g4, can no longer. So I'm expecting white to castle queenside. I'm thinking of moves like bishop, sorry, queen a5 check, which looks a bit silly. But my argument is if bishop d2, I can drop back to b6 and claim the bishop is misplaced on the d2 square. If queen a5 checks c3, then I feel like I weaken white's structure a bit on the queen side, and I have pressure on the a2 pawn. And in the future, I can potentially go for moves like bishop d7, b5, trying to kick the queen's defense of a2. A bishop e7 I'm sure is a fine move, but I think white just castles queenside there. So I think queen a5 might be a bit more accurate. I may be wrong, but I think I like the look of the move. The queen also can't block because of the way that our knight is situated. And yeah, Don't get me wrong, white could just castle kingside and say your queen's a bit stupid out here and try and play moves like b4 to kick it out. But then a3 becomes available potentially. I don't mind that position. I'm trying, I was just checking if c5 is on the cards, because that's a very common move in the caro to try and break out. But I think we might need to develop first and then go for c5. This knight's development is a bit stunted as well, because this knight can't come to f3. It's probably going to have to come to e2 and then maybe f4. Or g3. So bishop e7 or d6 looks nice. Probably d6 to control the f4 square. Maybe we can put a knight there in the future. I like that. Because yeah, this knight I expect to come to e2. So if we situate our bishop on d6, then we control the f4 square, which would otherwise be potentially quite an aggressive square. We could take this bishop. It has been on the cards for a few moves. But after pawn takes, white gets e4. And then he's got a massive center. And I feel like we're just helping white. Although we do get the bishop pair against two knights. I don't think it's that good in this particular case. This bishop's got nowhere to go anyway. g5. It looks nice, but I don't think it's doing anything. There's nothing to target. There's no knight on s6. There's no queen on d8. I like this. Ooh, a4. So white is not castling queenside. That's for sure. There is this move b5. He can't take because the rook hangs. But b5, queen c6. And the bishop is hanging at the end of that line. So that's no good. I assume his plan is b4 to kick our queen out. And expand more on the queen side with moves like b5. We could play a6. So a move like b4, queen c7, b5. And we take. And... That looks pretty nice. Although we could probably accomplish the same thing with bishop d7. Here, here, here we take. And he has to trade the queens and then we win the pawn. Bishop d7 just develops as well. So it can't be a bad move. I am just thinking though. We could play knight takes pawn takes c5. But I feel like it's not quite as powerful because the e pawn defends d5, d4 even. Whereas if there is no pawn on e3, then c5 takes. And if the pawn takes, white structure is a bit iffy. So we're going to develop. Knight e5 is a move to attack the bishop. But I think we can like do take there and then take and ruin white structure. So queen c7 I like. 
putting massive pressure on this diagonal now. We have full control over the f5 square, f4 even, which I think is going to be potentially important. It's just a, a, a square in the opponent's territory that we could make use of. c5 is off the cards because he's clamped down on that square. And he might not even advance his queenside any further. He might just leave it at that. Rook e8 to prepare a move like e5 looks nice. Again, I'm always checking whether it's worth taking the bishop or not. But I don't think it is in any of these lines so far. b5 is a move to try and expose the weak c3 pawn. But I don't think it comes to anything. Especially because a7 becomes very weak once this pawn takes... Knight b6 attacks the queen. I don't, I don't see what we do after queen d3. I think the plan is probably e5. Rook e8 can't be a bad move anyway. The only thing is, I don't really want to trade my bishop off for a knight. I think my bishop is very strong. So, that's one kind of issue. Okay, h3 means h2 is no longer under threat. Does weaken the g3 square though if we take the bishop and force the f pawn to take back? But I don't think we can exploit it just yet. Now I am looking at knight f6 into e4. I don't think that changes much from the knight being on d5, though. It's still controlling the same important squares from d5. We could just play an improving move like rook c8 to further deter b4. We could play a6 to further deter b4. Although, it's not playable in this position anyway. I'm struggling to make progress because e5 is the idea, but I don't want to give up my bishop. There, 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 there. Bishop here doesn't work because we take the knight. Ooh. Ooh. And then the bishop's under attack. And the bishop can't move because the knight hangs. Okay, as much as I've just been trash talking the move e5, I think that is the move. Because takes, 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 takes. I think we're winning. I think we're genuinely winning if white takes um, twice. Because the pressure down the e-file is too much. Also on c3... I don't think he can take. I don't think he can take this. Maybe there's ideas of like knight takes, queen takes, and then pinning on the d-file? But yeah, this looks more accurate from my opponent. Yeah, and he's finding good moves. We could just drop the bishop back. It's an idea. Um... I'd like to put this bishop on e6 to set up discoveries, but we just hang a bishop. So that's not a move. We need to respond to this, because otherwise he's going to take and go up and exchange. I like bishop d6, but then this bishop's very active. But it's not. he can't really take advantage of the fact that g7 is weak. We can always drop the bishop back if we need to. We are also going to have pressure on the knight when we move this bishop. So that's worth bearing in mind. We could go back to f6. Because if takes, knight takes. But I like my knight on the d5 square. So I think bishop d6 is actually good. I don't think I'm missing anything. Again, b4, we take. And we're just going, oh no, the knight hangs. Oh, okay, b4 is a move. Although, actually, no, because if takes there, his knight hangs at the end of the line, which might be why he just retreated it. But this looks dubious. 
This looks really dubious. Knight c1 can't be the right move. Now, if he has two turns to do this, he's good. So we need to act quickly. We need to act fast. And we need to be accurate here. Rook e4 is on my radar. Pinning the bishop to the queen. But I don't see a follow-up. Knight f4 is a move. Maybe we can try and sack. I don't see how we get the queen involved, though. Maybe we go with rook e4 and then try and sack. Like rook e4, knight d3, knight f4, rook e1. There, there. We don't have time. Opponent's defending well. Maybe we should have taken the bishop when we had the opportunity, but the time has now passed, so is what it is. Bishop e6 is a move to set up discoveries on the queen and threaten knight e3. Bishop e6, where does the queen go? e3 is the only square, and that blocks the knight's entry to get to e5. So bishop e6, queen d3, then knight f4 comes with tempo. Okay. We do have to check this, though. But then... Maybe we just take with the rook, and we have a big attack. Rook's going to swing over. I like that. So, let me just remember what... Yeah, bishop e6. The queen is running out of squares. Yeah, let's play it. Because the problem is, the queen can't retreat this way because there's still discoveries. The queen can't go this way because there's discoveries. So the queen can only go to d3. And then, knight f4 comes with a tempo. Now, the reason I was checking knight g5 was because if we try to play knight e3 then he can just take the bishop with an attack on our queen, which is important. So queen d3, as expected. Knight e4, looks great, looks really good. And then maybe sacrifices are on the cards, because knight f4 comes with tempo this time. So let's do that. We want to watch out for ideas of knight g5, linking up with the queen, if the queen retreats to like c2 to stay on the diagonal, but the queen does not. Is this move? Ooh. This move restricts this knight's movement a lot and attacks the rook. So a move like rook e1. How do we meet that? Not sure. Bishop d5 threatens knight h3. Where does the knight go? h4 to defend g2? That looks really flimsy. We could probably just play a move like queen e7. Okay, bishop d5 looks really nice. Yeah, let's do it. This looks real good. These bishops are absolute monsters. But paired with this knight on f4, I think it should be crushing. I think this is why knight c1 is a bad move. I just didn't believe in it. Because there's no way you can step off of the defense of the f4 square. I know the knight's vulnerable on e2. And it can't really come to g3 because I'm going to take it. So maybe, that's, maybe that means h3 was a bad move. Because it weakened the dart squares and made a move like knight g3 impossible. Because that's where I thought the knight was going ages ago in the opening. That's a good move, defending the knight. Knight h3 now doesn't work. But he is retreating again. Again, this move is on the cards, but rookie one, I think he holds on. 
So I feel like we need more reinforcements. Queen d7 sets up knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes. That looks devastating. Absolutely devastating. Because the queen's just getting involved. Trying to look for anything better. Anything more clinical. Because it's not an immediate threat. White could try and defend it. I don't know how he defends it though. Because even if he moves the knight, we can probably still go for it. We're going to do it. Queen e7. I think this is winning. Actually, if the knight moves... If the knight moves to h4, queen takes h3. Pawn takes h3. Knight h3 is mate. Because the bishops cut off the king's retreat. Yo. If he goes knight h4, queen h3. And it's game over. With a queen sack? That would be mental. Mm, doesn't bite. I'm trying to make queen h3 work, but I don't think it does. Queen h3, pawn takes... Well, queen h3, pawn takes, knight takes... King g2. Doesn't work. Um, Knight h3, though. Knight h3, pawn takes, queen takes... I'm not sure. I'm not sure because of knight d to e5. Although maybe we just take. Oh no, we just take that. No, knight h3 must be winning. There's no way that's not winning. Yeah, that, that has to be game over. Our bishops are way too strong. Way too strong. Now, it might be best for him just not to take and just be like, yeah, okay, I'm down a pawn. I'm going to keep playing because I am really low on time. So that might be his best option to play a move like king h1. I did not see a defense here because the problem is this knight is hanging. A move like knight e1 doesn't even work because rook takes e1. Knight takes, we checkmate him. He can't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rook takes. You know what's kind of pretty as well? Bishop h2. Oh, no. This knight defends. Yeah, no. Rook... Rook e1. Rook e1, surely. Rook e1, queen takes, or rook takes. Then we just take the knight. And rook e1, knight takes. Queen h2 and queen h1 are... Or bishop h2 is mate. So let's take. Rook takes e1. Sacking a rook after we just sacked a knight. This is game over. This is game over. I think this demonstrates the power of the bishop pair, man. The bishop pair are unbelievable. They, they're just lined up absolutely perfectly. I think this little reroute of bishop e6, bishop d5 was absolutely beautiful. Now, I don't think it matters whether we take with the bishop or the queen, but he resigns anyway. What a game. What a game. I am very happy with that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. By the way, can I get like some love for, you know, sacrificing a knight and then sacrificing a rook? If that doesn't deserve like a like and subscribe, then, you know, what am I even doing? What am I even doing if that doesn't deserve it? But yeah. Let's stop tooting my own horn and let's get into some game analysis. Boys, the game review is unreal. You can't see it, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. I mean, you can stalk my chess.com account if you want, just to check. But two brilliant moves, 91.1% accuracy, two inaccuracies, one mistake, and the rest were just great moves. The power of the Cairo Khan, ladies and gentlemen. E4, C6, D4, D5, 
Knight c3 takes, takes. Again, like I alluded to, knight f6 is a move. This is what I used to play. Takes, takes. And this is a viable line. But, oh, come on, don't be doing this to me, chess.com. But it doesn't have that much play in it. The way that I always found that it went was black just begging for mercy, essentially. This should be drawing as the black pieces, but oh, it's so difficult. Black has so little play in this. So, we go for the Karpov variation. Knight d7, bishop c4, knight g f6, and then knight g5, as expected. And the problem is the e6, and white's pieces look a bit silly. Queen e2, knight b6, and here I was expecting the bishop to drop back to either d3 or b3. And just to demonstrate, bishop b3, queen takes, I don't know, the knight develops with tempo, the knight's coming to e5, f7 is way too weak. So realistically, I should not be taking there. Maybe I play a move like h6, and it's quite reminiscent of an alien gambit, but I feel like this bishop's misplaced on, D on b3. I think the bishop's supposed to be on d3 in the alien gambit, but... Whenever I come up against these... Oh my god, please. Whenever I come up against these kinds of positions, I never like to play h6. I prefer just to develop normally, because h6 weakens the g6 square, especially when the knight tries to sacrifice itself, which is incredibly common, because black struggles to develop the light-squared bishop, meaning the light squares become monopolized by white's queen, bishop, and knight hopping in like this. Common idea. So I do have a video where I refute the alien gambit by basically not allowing it by not playing h6, which is how I would recommend playing against it. So bishop e3 was just weird because I just take the bishop. That was the best piece in white's position. Queen takes knight d5 is apparently an inaccuracy. My idea of queen a5 check was apparently better. Bishop d6 also works. Queen d5 works, offering a trade of queens. But the computer likes queen a5 check. And I did see this idea afterwards. Here, why did I not play it? I don't know. Maybe I just didn't see it. But I still think knight d5 is good. Because the computer wants this knight to come out to f3 to defend here. But bishop e7... I would take this position any day as black. Bishop is probably coming to f6 to put pressure on this diagonal and control the e5 square. It's a very easy position to play, which is why you play the Karo, right? To be solid and have a nice, simple position. So this is not the best by white. And apparently b5 is a move. <laughs> and if queen takes bishop d7... Queen b7, the queen is almost trapped. Knight b4. This is chaos. Queenside castle? Bishop c6 traps the queen. <laughs> that is a very cool line. I will have to make a mental note of looking for b5 in those positions to try and trap the queen. That is really cool. But I did not see that. Queen a5 is still a good move though. Computer does like bishop e7, which I did look at. Oh my god, I don't know why this... We're going to ignore the move not classified thing. I don't know what that is. But bishop e7 is a move. Queen a5 is still good though. c3. Bishop d2 was actually better, but then I was just going to drop my queen back to b6 and say your bishop's a bit stupid. So bishop d6. Knight e2. Castle a4. Bishop d7 is good, b4, queen c7, and yeah, we have so much control of this diagonal that the computer gives me a minus one advantage here. I think white's pieces are just very misplaced, whereas mine, like, the knight is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, can't really be kicked out either. If a move like c4 ever comes, then b4 is going to hang, and because white has no e-pawn, he can't kick it out of an e-pawn either. 
and our control of f4 is so good that the knight can't come to f4 to kick us out as well. Here a5 is a move, apparently. I guess the point is white can't advance because of things that I mentioned in the game. So after he takes, we can play c5? Or we can just take back. The computer seems to like the ideas of playing c5 and taking the bishop. but And it is a common idea in the Caro. But it just felt a bit dubious to me. So, rook f8 is apparently a mistake. Because it allows white to play a5. He doesn't. h3. Which is a natural looking move, right? Because h2 is weak. And we have a lot of pressure on it. But again, I think the knight should have been going to g3. So here, maybe knight g3 doesn't work in this exact position. Oh, because we just win a pawn. So maybe the bishop has to move back to like d2 first. Which the computer does like. Maybe like bishop d2. Let's say I play a random move and then knight g3. Maybe this is a the good setup for white. But... It's not simple to see this. h3 is natural, like I said. e5. And I like to e5 because I, I, white can't take. I thought he could not take because of queen e5. And I'm winning a pawn. Because the problem is the bishop is under attack by three pieces. White can't defend it well enough. So if he tries to move the bishop, the knight hangs. So... There's very little white can do. If players move like queen d3, we can just cash in our chips and win a pawn. Knight's under attack. Knight, say, moves to d4. c3 hangs. Computer prefers to attack my bishop, but... Bishop e6. Position looks great for me. I'm up a clean pawn. And here I think the bishop is better than the knight. Because after I move like knight d4, bishop d5... This is a powerful bishop. I think it's called a wooden shield. Like It defends some really key squares. Can't really be kicked out because it's defended by a pawn. Can always drop back to e6 if it needs to. g2 is very weak. And, I mean, I would take this position any day. Which is why white did not play knight takes e5 and instead played bishop d4. Here I did not like taking because then this knight gets into the game. It's a bit weak on e2 because the rook's targeting it. Whereas on d4, it's a monster. c5 is very difficult to play without my dark squared bishop for support. And although the computer still says I'm better, I would take this position with white probably. I probably prefer this from the white side. So, I don't know, the, his knights look very strong. So yeah, knight c1 is just a straight up blunder. And it makes sense because the knight's under attack. The queen isn't a great defender. I wonder if rook a2 or like rook fe1 is the move. Which is kind of what I was expecting just to defend the knight. But the position is still quite nice for me. Again bishop e6 is a move. The queen drops back to d3. The difference is I don't have knight f4 because the knight's trade. And that benefits white because my knight is a lot better than his knight. But it's still a very nice position for me. White has a good bishop but... I have two bishops, which are real nice. And I still have to work for this. Knight c1, though, just gives me way too much. Bishop takes h3 immediately. It's apparently good. G takes... Oh, not knight f4. But queen d7. Oh, he can't defend this pawn. Because if the king comes up to g2, then knight f4. So it changes up the move order. Because I did see knight f4 first. But then I thought he could defend himself. So, how do you defend h3? Apparently the knight has to come back to e2. Queen h3, knight g3. This is scary. Very scary to play with white. What's wrong with knight f4? Oh, tactics. But even this 
Black's just up a pawn. Yeah. Black's up a clean pawn. King h2. Knight comes back. This is far easier to play with the black pieces. So that would have been a nice line. But bishop e6, I think, is a more practical move. Just x-raying the queen. I wonder what the best... Best move is to ignore it? The top three engine choices, right, are to not move the queen. He wants rook e1. Knight f4 with a discovered attack on the queen. Queen f1? So you move the rook to give the queen a way out. And then bishop d5, this is completely winning for black. I mean, in my opinion, this is completely winning. The attacking setup is just so nice. White's got to find some only moves here to hold on. Moves like rookie three, which are hard to find. Yeah, queen d3 was the most natural move, getting out of the discovery. But like I said, knight f4 now comes with a tempo. Instead of in this position, knight f4 is still a good move. Minus 2.2. But white gets an extra move to play rookie one. Which is what I... I think that's what I was worried about. I think. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Minus 2.2. But here, this is minus 3.2. Because it's the same position after the queen retreats. Except with an extra tempo. And here, bishop d5 is best. Targeting the knight. Queen d1 defending the knight. Rook e6... The engine likes trying to lift the rook over, which I did consider. But queen d7, I think, is the second choice of the engine, which accomplishes a fairly similar goal, just adding another piece to the attack. Computer wants c4, just desperately trying to get this bishop off of this diagonal, which is hilarious. Knight g5, I did consider this move. I kind of thought white was going to play this, but even just h6. If the knight retreats, it's the same position, except it's now my move. So, knight d3. And then knight takes h3. I was very happy with this move. Because I was expecting the king to move and just not take me. And if I retreat the knight... It's, I mean, it's still winning, don't get me wrong, but white's still holding on. So here, if the king moves, I need to try and find queen g4. That's a very findable move, to be fair. Although I did have low time, because if he takes here, then he's just getting mated, right? Because he can't defend himself. So he does take. And then queen takes. And yeah, knight de1 made the most logical sense to me. Because if rook e1 isn't a move here, maybe white holds on. But rook takes e1 is a stunner. And queen takes e1 was just odd. Like, he's giving me checkmate for free. I mean, there's so many mates here. You can go bishop h2. King can't take. If the knight takes, then this is mate. If the king moves, this is mate. Best line for white is just to take back with the rook and then sack the queen, I assume. And, like, obviously this is winning. So, yeah. Two brilliant moves. Two sacrifices in the Karo Khan. Hey, what more can you ask for from a rating climb game? If you made it to the end of the video, you're the man. You know you're the man. And I'll see you in the next one.